In the 1930s, several Chinese came to Siam. They broke new ground in business with hard work. The clans rose to prominence as the famous Five Dragon Society of the region, led by the Song family. The Song family Dongjia is highly respected among the families of all surnames and is affectionately known as Big Brother. One day, the heads of the various families came in droves and gathered at the Song family to discuss the ownership of the coffee operation rights of the Five Dragons Club. Among the many hopeful candidates for the right to operate the business, Boss Sean and Boss Ma have attracted the most attention. Through careful decision-making, Mr. Song eventually handed over the coffee operation to Mr. Ja. However, Boss Ma is not happy and finds Boss Sean's weakness and exposes it in public. It turns out that Boss Ma and his henchman Paul are lovers. While Boss Sean is a broken man, this unknown secret exploded on the floor and shocked everyone. Boss Ma pointed out that in those days, breaking a sleeve was an unseemly thing to do. This can have a significant negative impact on business. After much deliberation by Mr. Son, he decided to hand over the operation to Mr. Ma. Boss Sean, on the other hand, was in a somber mood. For Boss Sean, he had worked hard for the Five Dragons Society and had achieved a lot of battle success, but lost the right to operate because of personal privacy. He hoped that Boss Son would make a fair decision for him, but Boss Son ultimately chose to defend his reputation. Much to Boss Sean's disappointment, in a feat of pique, Boss Sean chose to quit the Five Dragons Society, and Boss Son removed him in anger. In the end, Boss Sean clutches Pool's hand with the protection of a lover. The duo walked firmly out of the meeting. The word broken sleeve that came out of the meeting hall was heard by the two young masters of the Song family who were hiding outside and eavesdropping. They don't understand the meaning of it, and Lotus, who had dragged them away, wasn't too sure and suggested they find someone who knew Chinese and asked, Bart, who works for Boss Song, knows Chinese. He patiently explained to the two young masters what a broken sleeve was. According to legend, Ever AI of Han Dynasty was not interested in any woman, but fell in love with a man named Dong Zhan. The two are inseparable and share the same bed. One day, Emperor A.I. Fan woke up and his sleeve was pressed by Dong Zhan. He was afraid of pulling the sleeve to wake up his lover, so he used a knife to cut it off, showing the depth of his love. As a result, later generations used the term broken sleeve to describe the love between men. Broken sleeves were a bad thing at the time, was not going to be understood or accepted. Why does Aunt Holly think it's necessary to beg for understanding? It's a matter of two people having the same mind, regardless of gender. They all have the right to pursue their own happiness without harming others, and Holly's ahead of the curve understanding can only be described as well put, but not everyone has it. The next day, Boss Sean once again came to Boss Song's house to look for him. He threw Boss Song the coin that symbolized their coming to Siam together to share the same affliction back in the day. Boss Sean is a bit aggravated. He wants his big brother to do his fair share. Despite being a broken sleeve, one has dignity. He had come to Boss Song this time to plead for mercy but to decide to end their vows. After saying this, Boss Sean drew his sword and killed himself. Before he died, he hoped that one day Boss Song would understand his pain. After Boss Sean's story, it was only natural to continue focusing on the Song family's two young masters, the Song family being the most prestigious family in the Five Dragons Society. Boss Song had two wives, the calm and collected First Lady. Her son, Master Ted, is the firstborn of the family and the future heir. The personality is also more well-behaved and understanding. The staggering second lady, her son, young Master Yurk, is more lively and cheerful. As the youngest son, he is naturally only an alternative to the heir of the family and will not gain much attention. One of them, Boss Song, also has a lover. That was Auntie Lotus, who had tracked the two young masters out of the Five Dragons Club venue in the first place. But Aunt Holly could not bear children, so she did not become a lady. She was also the least threatening to the two ladies, but she truly loved the two young masters. Young Master Ted saw the legend of the White Snake during one of his family's visits to the theater and was attracted to Bai Su Jin's costume. When he returned home, he pretended to be Bai Su Jin with a bed sheet. Young Master Yurk didn't laugh at Young Master Ted when he saw him in this costume. Rather, he watched him earnestly through the play, even inviting him to see the sequel together next time. The two head to Aunt Holly's to pick up refreshments together. Yurk tells Ted to wait in the garden and get them himself. Ted then admires the flowers in the garden. The second lady is bent on relying on her son to get to the top, and in her heart, she hates that the first lady presses her at every turn, so she always wants to fix things. This time she saw the snake in the garden, and threw in a tent who was looking at the flowers in the garden. She was called away by her lord, and before she left, she had the maids around her deflate all the tires of the family car. At this point, Yurk also returns to Ted's side, and they both see the snake as well. Frightened, Yurk tries to run, and his movement causes the snake to attack. And Ted fought his way up to shield Jerk, getting bitten himself. Luckily, 
and Holly arrived just in time to carry Ted back to the house. There was no way to get to the hospital with all the tires on the family's car without air. The second lady is already waiting for Ted to die, her mouth quirking with joy. Luckily, the maid next to the first lady knows herbs and saves Ted in the nick of time. The first lady guessed that something was wrong, but there was no proof. There was really nothing else she could do but warn the second lady. Yurk is very grateful to his brother for saving his life. He promised his brother that he would take him to the theater, wherever there was one to be seen in the future. The two pulled the hook together, and it was obvious that the two young masters were really close. The first lady's pattern is also big. As much as she disliked the second lady, the two brothers were related by blood. When Aunt Holly is making toys, Yurk wants a sword while Tem wants a hairpin. It was seen by the first lady while Godin was dressing himself. Knowing her son's aptitude, the first lady remembered what happened to Boss John. The first lady felt that this was just wrong. She pulled her son and burned all of his hair and hairpin, telling him that he must die keeping this secret. And as they burned things, they were seen by the second lady and the second maid. They learned that the first lady had a secret, but they didn't know what it was. The second lady vowed to find out the secret. And Holly makes another hairpin for Ted when she finds out it was burned, and is almost seen by the second lady. The first lady takes out the family law in order to teach Ted a lesson. York was in the doorway when Ted was getting beat up and saw the scene. And so 12 years passed. Young Master Ted couldn't stop thinking about that by Su Jen in his heart though. But he has also kept his secret safe through the years. And he was very good at what he did. And he had a reputation with the workers. He handled things to his father's satisfaction as well. And Young Master Yurk was a bit more lively and mischievous. He also has a sense of justice when he sees a girl being harassed by ghosts on the street and promptly comes to her rescue. Then the natural rules are that much worse. The whole family is waiting for him to eat. His lordship was also a little biased towards the two young masters. The default troublemaker bunny to be punished is the youngest son, York, and naturally, the one who saves himself everywhere is his oldest son, Ted. But the two brothers are still very close. The older brother urged his younger brother to go back and find out what dad was doing. He was so that his brother would be able to share his father's worries when he was not working here someday. The brother, on the other hand, does not want to go back. He didn't want to fight his brother for everything nor did he want to ruin the bond between the two brothers. He just wanted to help his brother share the worries of his brother's heart. But my brother holds everything in to cheer his brother up. He even bought him an opera doll and promised to take him to the theater in a few days. Where can I find a brother like that? <laughs> The three brothers and Aunt Holly are still such a joy to be around. Aunt Holly really treats them like her own sons. Too, I guess, the first lady is still worried about Ted. He can't still discipline himself if his mischief is like Yurk, but he can't change his sexual orientation. She was worried that someone else would know about him, and the eldest maid comforted her. When the first lady discovers that Matt, the underling, is trying to seduce Ted, the moms of the big, ordinary families must have kicked the underlings out. But the first lady asked Matt to stay and take care of Master Ted until dawn. She hoped her son would just make a few mistakes, but sexual orientation wasn't something that could be changed. Tin leaves Matt alone in his room and comes to his mother to argue. He had always listened to his mother in the hope that one day she would accept him. But now, it was more like what his mother was doing was trying to change him. He thinks his mother doesn't love him, only herself. His words angered the first lady. The first lady gave him a resounding slap in the face. The first lady was also aggrieved because everything she did was for this son. Once the secret would be discovered, he would lose everything, and how would he leave after that? I can well understand the great young master's desire for the world to accept him, but standing up for the first lady, I can understand. It was this sentiment that the first lady wanted to protect her, her son, from the public. She wants to try to change him. The conversation between mother and son was overheard by the second lady and the girls. After more than a decade of searching for the secret, they still hadn't found the key piece of information. But this time, the first lady had actually hit her son, something that hadn't happened in more than a decade. It shows how important the secret is, and it must be able to be enough to destroy the grand dame. So the second lady was even more motivated. She had to find out. Ted and Yurk meet a man when they go to the theater to see a play. Seeing the side of his face, we know he's important. Seeing this shy, evasive look in Ted's eyes, it was clear that he was bursting at the seams with fever. As he was about to leave, Ted wanted to turn around and take one more look. He looked up at Ted too. Did they have a crush on each other? I didn't realize that the theater was built for the war, and the area has become a dangerous zone. Ted and Jerk get separated on their way to escape. Ted meets this man again and he saves him. At this point Ted could only feel his heart beating. Upon seeing his injury, Ted rushed to give him his handkerchief to stop the bleeding. Yet the two of them have yet to meet for the third time. The first lady then arranged a blind date. The blind date is still Yurk's love at first sight. 
Yang's house was mortgaged to the first lady. She promises her dad that she can redeem the house by marrying Ted, but she doesn't love Ted personally. Ted couldn't really love her either. Instead, over the course of their time together, she falls in love with Yurk, but my father's orders are hard to disobey. What should I do? Though the second lady has been picking on Ted, but Yurk is all about his brother, doesn't fight with him, and wishes him nothing but the best. But Yurk is smart. After the second lady tells him Ted has a secret, after he thought and analyzed over and over again, he discovered Ted's secret, but he didn't tell everyone. Ted argues with the first lady over a blind date, but they don't choose to say it at home. They have to say it in the yard. He was also so loud that he shouted out that he was a broken sleeve. It's going to be an accident if it's not. Duh. The family's underling. Here's Ted's secret. And then not surprisingly Don dies. The whole family suspects that the first lady did it. Especially the second lady. Don looks like a natural drowning death. So Ted doesn't look into it. Instead, Yurt thinks there's something fishy going on and is secretly investigating. Yes, Don's death did have something to do with the first lady. She and her maid teamed up to use a powder called Gideon's Bug Powder, which killed Don without a trace. She created the illusion of him drowning again. It's just that this stuff grows mushrooms on corpses over time, and Don had mushrooms growing on him. The funniest thing is actually the second lady, who guesses the whole truth, but none of the people she staggered out believed her. The first lady had her men deal with Don in order to cover this up. She urged Master Song to cremate him. And in order to expose this, the second mistress went to the Song family's rival, Master Ma, to get involved. So the question to ask is, what did Ted do at this point? All I can say is that sometimes fate is just meant to be. Ted meets a lost boy at the end of an alley to give him a ride home. I didn't realize that home was the man's home. Ted got along well with his siblings and even made a date to watch a movie together later. While fixing the door, Ted looked at him obliviously, flamboyantly. Ted heard his hand helping him carry the door and put his siblings to bed. Though Ted didn't know it, the man had also carefully applied his medicine while he slept, so will they be running in both directions? Before leaving, Ted hoped to see you next time. He offered to take his siblings out for a nice meal, only to be denied. He wouldn't even leave his name, saying that they were from different worlds and that they wouldn't have to see each other again. Underling Don dies with mushrooms growing all over his body. On the day he was cremated, Master Ma asked someone to pretend to be Don's relative and asked to open the coffin to examine the corpse. The second lady found the body with gray hair. Don was a young man, so this body can't be Don's. The police decided to investigate the matter. So where is the real Don? Don was buried in the backyard by the first lady's men. Because of the jitney of powder, the corpse was covered in mushrooms that had grown to the top layer of the ground. Families even picked them back and ate them. After this cremation incident, Ted feels even more strongly that it may have been his secret that killed Don. Yurk comforts him, and he's almost about to tell Yurk his secret. That's enough about Don for now. Ted promised last time that he'd take the guy's siblings to the movies. However, right now, this condition can't be looked at directly. Ted then came to Aunt Holly to do the shadow puppet show she did as a child. Ted did a shadow play rendition of The Legend of the White Snake for his younger siblings. He even asked the man to help, because he didn't have enough hands to hold it. On parting, men still say the same thing. Different worlds, no need to see each other again. But this time Ted didn't care. He laughed and said he'd be mean to me next time we met. Ted forgot to return with a flashlight and saw the man talking with Boss Ma. Turns out his name is Siv, and he's been working for Boss Ma, because his sister had a disease that was not cured by any other medicine. Only Boss Ma's medicine was miraculous, so he had no choice but to cling to Boss Ma. Ted talked to him and said that Boss Ma wasn't a good person. He could be his first choice himself if he wanted to rely on it. His father is also in a position to help him, but Ted doesn't tell him who his father is. He saves Siv from saying rich and poor again. Two worlds, Ted finds Yin and tells her the story of Leon Shunbo and Zhu Yin Tai. Did he tell her to think about the fact that the only first option to redeem the house was to marry? True love is rare and should be fought for. It makes Yin face his feelings head on. The relationship with her quickly warms up, and Yin decides to raise the money to redeem the house herself, to prevent the police from investigating that the body at the crematorium wasn't Dung's. The eldest maid took the desperate step of burning down the house where the body was kept on the day of the bombing. She was also injured as a result, but after the body was charred, the police could no longer proceed. Just when everyone is at a loss, Master Song catches the man pretending to be Dom's relative. The second lady's collaboration with Master Ma was almost exposed in this man's statement, and that's when Ted and Yurk discover in the bill that the number of Master Ma's business is not correct. They dragged Aunt Holly to the venue, although Master Ma denies it. Until Ta finds more evidence, his coffee business is all in the hands of Drew from the Five Dragons. Now, the feud between Master Ma and Ted is really a feud of sorts. 
There were so many mushrooms that not only were they eaten by the underlings, but they were even now moving to the host's table. At this point, only the first lady and the first maid knew. Although this mushroom tastes fine and has a nice non-toxic flavor, but how is the first lady going to get through her heart? Mushrooms on a corpse, it's exciting to think about. Everyone ate until they were so jolly that the first lady was on the verge of throwing up. She was also persuaded to try it by her husband and son. As expected, she ran out and threw up. After that, the first lady started having nightmares and was bedridden and sick. Everyone ate mushrooms and nothing happened, except the first lady got sick. This incident arouses your suspicions again. Ken and Holly came to the mushroom patch and decided to take one to someone to ask what kind of mushroom it was. Aunt Holly and York walked through many drugstores, and no one recognizes the mushroom. Aunt Lotus thought of the fact that the Song family used to have a doctor. Chi, doctor, Chi is the big maid's teacher, so him I know. But at the moment, he's hard to see in Conry. And the first lady's side had already started to act, telling the first maid to destroy the mushrooms. Ying hasn't even gotten the money together yet, and parents on both sides of the family are already making arrangements for the day. All three were in a hurry, but the amount of money needed to redeem the room was so large that three people couldn't come up with the money. Ted tries to go to the first lady's place to steal the deed, but he is bumped into by the first lady. The two men talk and are overheard again by Matt, the underling. Matt also learned that the young master has a secret. Plus, when Aunt Lotus sent the first mistress a needle and thread earlier, she also accidentally overheard the matter of the young master having a secret. After Matt found out, this time Drew from the Five Dragon Society also knew that the young master had a secret. That's why the show actually has a name. It's called The Great Young. Masters, everyone knows I have a secret. As young master Ted's wedding is approaching, Master Song decides to take everyone with him to Chuan Wuli to pray for blessings. At this time, the second lady immediately reported to Master Ma. Master Ma asks if to help him kill the Song family's eldest son. A return for the formula of the medicine. Except if doesn't know what he's up against yet. And Holly comes to ask Master Yurk what Master Ted's secret is. Yurk has actually guessed Ted's secret because of what he has learned through his childhood and through his knowledge of his brother. But he didn't tell anyone. Yurk just said that it was difficult to talk about it. I didn't expect the conversation to be overheard by Master Song, which was a big trouble. Yurk had to lie to Master Song that it was from sneaking out or something. How could Master Song really believe this little thing? Master Song had to arrange for Bob, who was close by, to keep an eye on Ted and the First Lady at all times. He needs proof. Now Master Song and Bob know about it too. This is more proof that everyone in the big little house knows I have a secret. Big Junior Ted has a secret. The whole family had gotten past the wiretaps and learned that he had a secret. But they don't know exactly what the secret is. Master Song came to Cumbri specifically to bless Ted's marriage. They did not yet know what dangers would greet them. That night, Master Song found Ted. He talked to him a lot about his childhood and then asked about his secret. Ted came close to saying it, but was interrupted by the First Lady. Ziv has also arrived in Cumbri as expected, and he takes orders from Master Ma. Its purpose was to kill the Song family's eldest son. But at the moment, he didn't know who the Song family's eldest son was. He crosses paths with Nita, the second lady's maid, and is given orders to kill anyone who goes to the Kun Yum shrine tonight. The second lady purposely says she's going out of the house to repent and asks Yurk to help get Ted here. She wants to apologize. Upon seeing Ted, she vocally apologized and then couldn't breathe. She tells Ted to wait for her and asks Yurk help her to take her medication, thus giving Ziv a chance. After leaving, the second lady drags Yurk, while on the other side, Ziv is already on the move. Due to the sand sprinkled in Ziv's eyes, he couldn't see the person in front of him. When he got a better look, he realized that the person in front of him was the one he used to think about in the night. Ted pulls off Ziv's mask, but it falls onto his face, and he still can't see who the other guy is. At that moment, the first lady was heard looking for Ted to prevent Ted from responding. Ziv kissed up. There are a lot of ways to keep Ted from vocalizing. How come you chose this one? But I have to say that this segment was by far the best in the show. It's halfway through the play and you to have a really small part. Ted only suffered a few traumatic injuries, but psychologically I don't know what kind of impact it will have. <laughs> when questioned by the crowd, Ted simply said he was on a walk when he was attacked by a thief. He didn't mention anything about the second lady. On one side, your questions why the second lady did what she did, and if she saw the goodness in her brother, he killed to tell that secret. On the other side of the coin, is the first lady stirring up the relationship between York and Ted. And both blood brothers may kill each other. But Ted doesn't believe York would harm himself. Ziv, who never misses, miss this time. He resigns from his job with Master Ma, who continues to threaten him with his sister. How is Ziv going to face Ted next? Master Song came to Boss Shaw's tablet. He misses Boss Shaw and misses many of his good qualities. 
The First Lady asks Master Son if time could be redone. Would Master Son accept Boss Zhao's image? Will he kick him out? And Boss Son's answer still stands by his original decision. No one can accept a man with a broken sleeve to manage the five dragons. If the answer of Boss Son at this time is acceptance, it is change. Perhaps the First Lady would not continue to be so paranoid. But that answer only reinforced all the decisions the First Lady had made to find out what species the mushrooms actually are. Aunt Lotus and Yao Master, you look around Cobry for Dr. Chi. It was all about giving up when Dr. Chi showed up. Dr. Chi could tell that this winter mushroom was a blood-sucking mushroom. It is not a natural growth, but grows on a living person or animal. But only those who do know exactly what it is. After learning again that Aunt Lotus and others had picked the mushrooms from the Song family's backyard, Dr. Chi seemed to have guessed something. Dr. Chi makes an appointment to see his protege Jill to question about the mushrooms. Jill just said that they stole their own gitter's dust to grow it. Dr. Chi made another appointment to see Master Song. Learning of the death of his subordinate Don, he tells Master Song to go to the house and find out what's under the mushrooms. When the time comes, he'll go to the Song family to look for him. Back at the Song Master, has Bob digging for mushroom land, but there's nothing there. It turns out that the last time Jill destroyed the mushrooms, the corrosive nature of the powder had been able to corrode the bones. There's nothing left there. So, is the Don case going to be over? Master Song looked in the pit and searched for half a day and found a human tooth. Ted goes back to find Ziv and watching his sister in such pain in bed. Jill hides the knife. He got up to walk Ted back and took him down a road with very few people. Ziv wants to do it, but he can't even look at this innocent, simple face of Ted's. At this point, Ziv has moved on from Ted. What's he going to choose, a sister or a lover? Ziv chose to give it up and protect Ted, but Master Ma sought it out and let Master Ma know that he knew Ted. Ted had done himself a favor, so he couldn't kill him. Master Ma didn't want Ziv to be ungrateful and gave him two choices. Aunt Holly and York want to go to the mushroom land to investigate further and are called in for questioning by Master Song. Aunt Lotus advocates informing Master Song about everything and maybe more people to investigate together. But York continues to lie and deceive Master Song. He doesn't want his brother's secret to be known by anyone else. Master Song went to Dr. Chi with what he dug up. He now thinks everyone is suspicious, not just the First Lady and Jill. And it all seems to have something to do with Ted's secret. But he didn't know, until now, what Ted's secret was. Dr. Chi discovered that the tooth really came from someone who was killed by Gizzo dust. York and Yin talk about their struggles. There are times when the person involved in the event might make a better decision than York. A bystander would... York finds Ted and informs him of his investigation into the blood-sucking mushrooms. And what he investigated was indeed the truth. Ted hears the truth, and he still can't accept that his own mother is a murderer. His mother did all this because of herself, and he's the one to blame. In fact, York and Ted's conversation has been overheard by the second lady, but the most crucial secret was not told. Ted doesn't want this to go on any longer. He never wanted his mother, or anyone else, to get into trouble over his affairs again. He rushes to the compound and beats a drum to wake everyone up as he makes his secret public. But just before opening her mouth, the first ladies if you say it, prepare for my funeral. It kept Ted from talking. He ended the farce with the excuse of getting everyone together to catch the snake. Underling Matt is being bullied and it's Siv who saves him. What's Siv's business in the Song neighborhood? Siv came to the Song family, naturally, on Master Ma's orders. Master Ma asks Siv to investigate Ted's secret. And investigating the secret will save him from having to kill Ted. But in order to get Siv to work for him, Master Ma detains Siv's brother and sister. Ted asks Siv what kind of work he wants to do, accounting or laborer. Siv says he can do any of this because he can read. Matt is up to his old tricks and tries to seduce Siv again. This sister's eye can really not miss any handsome guy. This entanglement between Matt and Siv is seen by Ted, who happens to be visiting Siv. Ted was furious. The first mistress had begun to stare at Anne Holly suspiciously. Anne Holly told Yerp to be careful, and our young master Ted? He is finally happy. This writing scene between him and Ziv is worth watching over and over again. Ziv thinks of her siblings and wishes they could go to school too. Ted helped set him up directly. He waited for his younger siblings to get better and received them directly at home, arranging for them to enroll in school. Doctor, she comes to Master Song with the teeth to verify the cause of death. Master Song also finds the First Lady and Jill straight away to confront them, but couldn't find any evidence that Jill had Gitter's dust. At that moment Nita, the second maid, comes to report that she has seen the place where Jill bought the evidence. The second lady saw that the first lady was going to be unlucky, and immediately called a lot of people to gather around with a loudspeaker. However, the box was empty when dug up, and could not be seated for the crime of the first lady. Master Song had to announce that he would continue to investigate the matter. So, where did the toxic powder in the box go?
it turned out to be the first young master. The first young master saw it, so he helped clean it up. The youngest became an accomplice after all. How else can we say? They are pure love ceilings. You don't have to say it. You don't have to kiss it. You can't see the fullness of love in each other's eyes. But the first lady couldn't see that. Master Song also has a lot of suspicions about the first lady. And the medicine is only drawn from Dr. T. He broke the first lady's heart to her face. But the first lady is confronted with Master Song's aggressiveness about Ted's secret. She still had the same line about not having any secrets. However, after those jet and bug powders, the first lady and his magical assistant, Dill, continue to work on a new powder. That is cicada powder. Those powders have an aphrodisiac effect. The first lady is plotting to do something big again, in order to make Ziv better at recognizing words. Ted carefully drew pictures for Ziv. The illustrations make it easier to understand. What is this? This is love. Every time the two of them got a little closer intimately, someone would come. Last time it was his dad and his mom. This time it's the brother. It's really hard to fall in love. Ying comes looking for Yurk, and the hairpin accidentally falls to the ground. Ted helps Yin with his hair, all of which Ziv sees. Ziv also learns from the workers that Ying is Ted's fiancé. Ziv is starting to get annoyed. Ziv complimented Yin on her beauty. Ted also looks innocent and praises Ying for being not only beautiful but also smart and brave. She dared to do something. Young master, don't you even look at the faces of the people next to you. He was about to blow a gasket. After, that Ziv doesn't go to class as normal and seriously is like avoiding Ted. Yurk realizes that his brother is upset about Ziv and wants to investigate. He sneaks into Ziv's room and sees Ziv's scissors and some letters on the ceiling. At this point Ziv returns and the two get into some feast fights. Just as Yurk is about to get the letter, Ted arrives and takes in. What exactly is the letter that Ziv is desperately trying to hide? Is it a conflict with Master Ma? It was all about his love for Ted. All about Ted's name. Yurk wanted to burn the letter. But God forbid, if it was Ted who picked up the letter with the names written all over it at this point, it would have been a master stroke. However, it's Ted's dad who picks up the letter, and it's clear that Yurk is very fond of Ted. Ziv tearfully burns all the letters with Ted's name on them as she remembers. He reminded himself of what he had come here for. The cicada powder made by the first lady killed many of the cicadas in the yard. Ziv secretly brought one to tip off Master Ma. On his way out, he met his brother. He learns from his brother that Master Ma has sent bad guys to deliver money to Q Tad again. When he returns, he meets Jill, who has come masked to drum up cicada powder. After a fight, Ziv assumed that the masked man was sent by Master Ma. He went to Ted with his heart racing. But Ziv, did it ever occur to you that the person your brother was talking about could very well be yourself? In order to inherit the family business as soon as possible and become the new generation of Five Dragon Society president, young Master Ted must be married as soon as possible. But his secret won't allow it. And Yin, the object of the marriage, is still his brother's favorite. They have been communicating with their parents, but to no avail. This time, he helps Yin sell the land to get the ransom. Ted is determined to dissolve the marriage. The younger brother also helped his brother to persuade him, and it ended with both of them being scolded. Master Song was still so angry that his eyes went black and he almost passed away. The whole family is anxious. How come the wedding is cancelled? Only one person was happy, and that was Siv. Difficult people, after being scolded, talk about the solutions afterward. They mention their original boss, Mr. Ja. Ted finally reveals his secret to his brother. Ted is happy to finally have someone who understands and accepts him completely. Next is when we get to the most outrageous episode. The first lady goes so far as to try to use the aphrodisiac effect to change Ted's sexual orientation. Sexual orientation is sexual orientation. How can it be changed so easily? The first mistress asked Ying to come to the house while the master was out. The first lady followed. The pre-prepared teacups. One by one, she handed tea to Ying's dad, Ian, and Ted. Ying's dad's cup is a sleeping potion that makes you sleepy. And Ted and Ying's is just laced with residual fans. But because Ying's dad's medicine kicked into quickly, Ying hasn't even had a chance to drink and has to take care of his dad. But Tia wasn't so lucky, swallowing it in one gulp. And the effects of the medicine begin to take effect. He was starting to feel hot. The first lady hurriedly arranged for someone to lock Ying and Ted in a room. She had also instructed her subordinates beforehand to all go work in the backyard and not to come to the main house until they were done. Just as Ted is in a daze, ready to fondle Yin, Ziv barges in. Then Yurk arrived. At this point Ted frowns. Yurk takes Yin to get his wounds dressed and tells Ziv to take care of Ted. Ziv delicately rubbed Ted's body as Ted stroked Ziv. He was finally saying what was on his mind. Oh, been a lie. In fact, as the plot progressed to this point, Master Son had somewhat guessed it. He guessed that his son might not like women. He also thought of Master Jean, the one who had committed suicide in front of him. But he didn't want to believe it, and he didn't dare to. Earlier, 
Master Psalm asked Zhu to help check Siv's background. Zhu found out that Siv was one of Master Ma's men. Master Psalm immediately rushed to his home, and at that moment, the First Lady thought the raw rice was cooked and pulled a large group of people to the scene. However, the moment he opened the door, he performed the art of disappearing smiles perfectly. Siv and Ted are living a small life out there. This time in his life is probably what Ted wants most. Siv also took him to meet his late parents, which rounds up to marriage yikes, and the whole family, as well as Master Ma's side are looking for them. At this point, everyone in the Song Mansion already knew that Siv was Master Ma's man. Ted runs into Ying and Yurk on the street. He wrote a note to ask Anne Lotus to meet him, wanting to tell her the secret so that she could persuade father. But the person who came was not Aunt Lotus, but the First Lady. From the First Lady he learns that Siv is one of Master Ma's men and that he has been tricked. He doesn't believe it and frantically runs home, only to find that the house has been taken over by Master Ma. Overheard at the door, Siv tells his secret to Master Ma. A disheartened Ted runs into Master Son on his way to run away. So it rains in the sky when one is sad. Together they return to the Song Mansion, and by now Ted doesn't trust Siv anymore. Even though Siv has come all the way to the Song residence to find him, he still kicks him out because he's going to do something big. And at that moment, the First Lady and Jill developed a new sweet powder. They're disguised and even want to give Ziv a ride. Ziv collapses on the road after being hit with Jinbug powder, and he listens to the young master's secrets one by one. The First Mistress has gone killing mad, and she even wants to finish off young Master Yurt. Ted doesn't want to see his mother this crazy again. The mother's request was that an announcement at the Five Dragons that he was going to be married would solve everything. But it was too late. Master Ma had already learned the secret from Ziv's mouth. Ziv is saved by Yin, who expresses his true feelings for Ted to Yurk. This doesn't look like a scam. Yurk chooses to help them, but Ziv asks Ted out to go far away. Instead of coming out, Ted wrote a farewell letter. It's not that they don't love each other anymore. It's that they're meant to be. Ziv goes to save his siblings when the Jinban powder kicks in and he passes out. This second fall, will he just die? Ziv's brother escapes just in time to run into Ted and Yurk. Ted is devastated to learn that Ziv is dead. It was time for the annual Five Dragons convention. On this day, the First Lady is going to announce Ted's matrimony at the meeting, making him the next president. There's nothing anyone can do to stop this. So after learning that Master Ma knows Ted's secret, the First Lady kills it. She and Jill killed Master Ma. On the other hand, young Master Ted intentionally let Nita, the second maid, see him going to buy Jidden Bug Powder and the letters Ziv wrote to himself. This caused the Second Lady to announce in public that he was a broken man. In front of the crowd, he admitted to breaking his sleeve and also admitted that the Don case was his own doing. Inside the box is the poison. The news blew up the scene. Master Song is so angry that he slaps Ted, and so angry that he can't stand up himself. Ted and Yurk do their goodbyes. He wants Yurk to help him take care of the family and his mother. Why did Ted admit to being the murderer in the Don case and why did he take it all? Because he knew that his mother had used every trick in the book to push herself into the presidency after. She would just go confess to Dad and kill herself. How could he watch his own mother kill herself? Siv is dead. He can't afford to lose another important person. So he chose to carry it all, to take the punishment that was due, because as far as he was concerned, he had caused all this in the first place, and he himself was the culprit. Jill discovers that the box Master Tent buried was really Gitter's dust. So what was that just now, Master Samaritan? So Master Ma is not dead yet. Master Ma kills his way back, because of the ghosts backing him up in Tan's hostage. He was arrogant enough to kill a member of the Five Dragons Society and make Master Song's entire family kneel for him. In order to save the whole family, the Second Lady attempts to have another good talk with him. But Master Ma doesn't give face and exposes all the sins of the Second Lady. At this point, the First Lady is also fully aware of her mistake, and she apologizes to the whole family that her ignorance has caused everyone to suffer. Everyone was ready to die under Master Ma's punches and kicks. And at that moment, the First Lady and the Second Lady who had appeared on the upstairs windowsill, met only by the meeting of their eyes. The two then already knew the plan. The first time, the first lady and the second lady joined forces. The crowd escaped the grand dame's gizzo powder and other attacks, under the cover of an upstairs banner. That said, all the other group actors are bound to die from the powder. Why is Master Ma so resilient? That doesn't make any sense at all. The crowd stumbles and runs away. But Master Ma can't still resist the poison, and Nita is shot and killed. The first lady, second lady, and Holly? York and Jill escape, but Master Song and Ted are stopped by Master Ma. Once again, the First Lady reached out to the Second Lady. Internally the two fight endlessly, but externally the two turn their differences into peace. It's really touching. The First Lady and Jill go back to save Master Song and Ted. They lied to Master Ma that they had the antidote to the Jinbot powder. 
As the two sides were at a standstill, Tao appeared, seeing the way Tab looked as if being alive, literally brought me to tears right then and there. This ghost TV is so long and late in the game, it cheats people out of their tears. The two sides fought, and Master Ma couldn't beat them and ran out to get help. Instead, Jill gets hurt, and the bad part is that she's covered in Jardia dust where she got hurt. Time is running out to untie Master Song and Ted, commanding everyone to escape at this rate. Master Song tells most of the people to get out of there, and Ted tells Siv to take his mother and escape first. Why isn't Siv dead? Because Siv met Dr. Chi. Because at that point in time Dr. Chi had already developed an antidote to the Jin Bug Powder, which was the rebound scale. Jill was getting more and more injured and was already starting to lose some of her strength. The First Lady, after hearing Ziv's words to Yurk about how she must save Ted, she began to regret everything. She regretted the way she had turned things around to hide Ted's broken sleeve. And at that moment, Master Ma locks up Master Song and Ted, and still needs them for the antidote. Jill is powerless to return to the scales because of the Jin Bug Powder seeping through the wound. Jill also took her punishment for doing so much wrong and left the world. Looking at Ziv's younger siblings, the First Lady knows that she's the source of Ted's unhappiness. She now has nothing but regret, and is hoping to save Ted and Master Song after the two post antido vendetta, perhaps having hurt Ziv's heart. The First Lady recognizes Ziv as well. Ziv risked his life to come to Ted to make sure he was safe. Perhaps hearing the heartfelt conversation between the two of them, Master Song met Master John again in his dream once more. It looks like Master John has always been Master Song's heartache. Master Chang also said the same thing as Ted. All they want is just respect as ordinary people. Upon awakening, Master Song reconciles with Ted and with himself. He promises Ted that if he makes it out alive, he'll let Tin pursue his own happiness without further hindrance. Then again, before the day of the formal engagement, Drew came to see the First Lady. She asked for a lot of information from Boss Ma. Drew doesn't approve of bullies like Boss Ma and the President of the Five Dragons, so she's here to help the First Lady and the others. Master Ma is really ruthless, though. His plan is to burn down the Song residence once he gets the antidote. So he transports a lot of diesel fuel to the Song residence. The day of the negotiation did not go very well. With a lot of twists and turns, Drew spiked the wine with some ecstasy and confused a lot of the defense. They rescued the workers and came to Master Ma. Once again, the first and second ladies worked together to rescue Drew and the Gan. But when the two ladies confronted Master Ma, they just realized that their biggest weaknesses, Master Song and Ted, were under the table. Not only did the two ladies drop their buns, but Master Song also helped Ted take a bullet. Sif and Jerk arrive later, and Master Ma leaves Master Song behind and captures Ted. The First Lady traveled alone to save Ted and gave the antidote to Master Ma, but Master Ma didn't believe her and wanted her to drink first. But this bottle of antidote was actually premixed with Gideon's bug powder by the First Lady. For the sake of her son, for the sake of the family, the First Lady drank it without a second thought, and Master Ma also drank it. After drinking the antidote laced with poison, Master Ma also began to poison himself, but he lacked the virtue to set the warehouse on fire. The first lady asked the second lady to promise him to take all the people out, and the second lady agreed with tears in her eyes. In the fire, the first lady kills the evil Master Ma. The rushing Master Song hears that the first lady is still in the fire and rushes in to save his wife without saying a word. The first lady explained the aftermath to everyone on her deathbed, and asked the master to accept her children, whether he's different or not. He's a good kid. Thank you to Holly and York for being so accommodating and caring for Ted. And please ask the second lady to take care of Ted. She and Ted apologize, and she makes Ted promise to live proudly. She ends up giving Ted to Siv. After that, the Five Dragons Society resumed again, and the Song family's business slowly picked up again. York and Yin's marriage was also approved by both parents. Ted says goodbye to Master Song and goes to live the life he wants with Siv. Although Master Song was reluctant, he promised to agree to whatever Ted did afterward. So he didn't stop it. Ted lives a free and happy life with Ziv and his siblings. Ted is finally living the life he most desires. The whole family then came over to have dinner with Ted and had a great time. Master Song also gave Ziv the most delicious fish and three meats, which was a high recognition for Ziv. After the meal, Master Song wants Ted to come home and help out because he's so good at what he does. And Yurk is really inferior in business. And it's the second lady who offers to bring him back. Everyone looked at the rainbow and felt the beauty of life. Ted also made the decision to go back and help the family and everyone was overjoyed. That's the end of the story. Thanks for the support and love. We'll see you in the next installment.